The Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabuah, Chapter 10. And after witnessing this wedding, my mind was brought to understanding with a deep sense of the task that lay ahead for this couple. And having seen some of the outcome of their lives by vision, I am all the more eager to learn of the actual events and details of how the religion of Shabuah was established by them and the full meaning and effect of it. And it is a certainty that the world needs this vital information and the vision continued. And I see Zedekedelebab and she is holding a baby in her arms with a little child beside her. And there is a number of people gathered before her and they are all sitting on the ground. And for one so young, for bearing and sense of authority, it is that which is beyond her years. And the intensity of the feelings here are gripping. And now Melchizedek is taking the children off to one side. And it is obvious now that she is going to teach. And she said, today I am going to explain marriage and the influences of male and female among the watchers in creation. My, my, she is actually going to speak so I can hear her. And she said, as you know, there were eight children of our first parents that spread themselves out upon the earth. Four of them were righteous and four were bent on being wicked. But among them, there were only four marriages and their marriages were the element that expanded their influence and the use of their agency, either for righteousness or wickedness. And without the element of marriage, their original influences would have faded away with time and become an unknown thing of the past. But because of the power of marriage, it introduces people to the watchers in creation and it joins them together either to the Erekodeshi or to the Darkardarchi. Reference number 88. Fornication is a signal to the Darkardarchi and their evil ones that you are inviting them to own you and it opens you up to have evil spirits live in you. And it has a profound effect, and for many it is a wonderment that this can be so. But if their marriage is profane, they become subject to the Dakardar Chi through their marriage, and that also enhances their influence for darkness and death. And those who are joined to the Erko de Shi are empowered to enlarge light and life. And she said, we think of the Darkardarchi as being male because they are the fathers of the Nephilim. And we think of the Erko Dishi as female because Hava named a mountain Rishani and called her mother. But maleness is not bad and femaleness good for the lives of the watchers of heaven are much more profound than that. Now understand that the Erko Dishi see through the eyes of Anakis and they hear through the ears of Mozart. So when thinking of how Rihi saw and understood her daily walk with Moza and how Zakar heard the voices in creation in his daily walk, the Erko does she see in similar ways as Rihi and they hear in similar ways as Zakar. And just like how holy women see and understand how repentance brings forgiveness, their eyes are attuned to the levels of the visions of wholeness inside a person. And this points to salvation and in their understanding and wisdom, women tend to see virtue and they sense that part of a vision that can bring the gift of life more fully into the present. And being women, they are charged with moving fear out of the present because of their connection with confidence and the renewal of forgiveness. And they can influence people to know what anarchus means to them in the present moment. An example would be to consider that a woman can know that winter is coming and she can remember past suffering and be aware of the fears of winter. But the Asid dancing in the winds of summer speaks to them that there should be no fear of winter because peace and assurance are the watchwords of the Erekodeshi to women. And every one of the Erekodeshi has that message to women in some form which arises out of faith in the Lord. And likewise, men hear a call to action, to move out and to do their repentance. And when they see the Asid dancing in the winds of summer, they make plans and thus are not afraid of winter because the Air Kodeshi tell them how to perform their labors. And they hear all the light in the Air Kodeshi and it opens up to them the meaning and the effects of reproval. 
And as men of God, those who are thus joined to the Eric Hodeshi are satisfied with the processes of repentance. And they are confident in their future. That is why Yadzikab was not as troubled over his sin as Hava was. And the Eric Hodeshi, each and every one, have a watcher for the ears of men, of gentleness, patience, with safety and comfort. And of knowing how to act to enhance relationships that lead to expanding the gift of life. And so the Erekodeshi are the sons of heaven for men, and they are the daughters of heaven for women. And they are ever faithful, but those with the profanity of marriage are subject to the Dakarta Chi, who hate visions of holiness that are linked to maleness or femaleness. And in the last days, the wicked will seek to do away with that which God has established. And it came to pass that I saw that all this took place as a casual discussion together with Zedekedalabad. And she is using lots of hand gestures and many questions are being asked. And a young man who was the firekeeper at their wedding is standing to ask a question and he said, My father was a listener and he has passed down to me that Abara taught that the second decree of creation is the source of the sanctity of marriage. Dear instructor, what can be said to explain this? And Zedekedalabab rose to her feet, and she went over and drew out the two tablets from a box, and she unwrapped them and lay them on her lap upon her mantle, and the people moved closer to see them. And I can tell by the look on her face that, that this teaching session is becoming more serious, and we are headed for deep waters. And she waited for everyone to settle down, and she said, Melchizedek and I are Zakari. Reference number 89. Pronounce Zakari. This may be the feminine form of Zakari. I'm not certain, but I heard her say this clearly. And I had not heard the two names of Zakar and Rehi said together before. And she said, I have the guidance tablet and he has the covenant tablet. And the two of these tablets are joined together in a way that reflects the sanctity of marriage. And on the guidance tablet, there is a man's side and woman's side. And the woman on the tablet is looking out from the left side. And as these two tablets join together, the right hand on the covenant tablet corresponds with the man and the left hand with the woman. The right hand expresses the task of Moza as our Prince of Righteousness and Redemption, and the left hand on the tablet expresses the other task of Moza, and that is for him to be the messenger of salvation. And the second decree of creation speaks of all the doings of creation, reference number 90, righteousness, and the affairs of salvation and Moza has to both save and redeem. And it is then seen that the two tasks of Moza the Lamb are as if they are joined together. And both these tasks can only be accomplished by the intervention of agency. And so this guidance tablet expresses the relationship between their intervention of agency and the marriage of the man and woman. And the guidance tablet has more than the 10 guidances written upon it. It has also the 10 differences between man and woman that define their own specific functions with the intervention of agency and it indicates to each of them their duty and responsibility in that intervention. And all people can see the light of inspiration and all people can hear the truth, both men and women. So it is not that only Rehi could see and only Zakar could hear. But rather the guidance tablet is indicating how men and women can join with salvation and redemption with good and eternal effect. And so the hearing and seeing of Zakar and Rehi as children was found to be expressing the boundaries of the intervention of their agencies and unlike others, their morning prayers were in fact the intervention of agency. And that is why what they accomplished as children through their adult life became established among the righteous to this day, among those who are called the Zakari. And rich blessings have flowed from the profound acts of little children and Zadokel Labed is sitting down. And Melchizedek takes her place before the people, and he said, A part of why it has been so hard for those of us who came from Qatar to fully implement the righteousness of the divisions of holy men 
is because we have not utilized marriage in relation to the intervention of agency, and we have not known how, and I am here today to teach you from on high. The great one anarchist demonstrated for us all through the lives of our first parents the relationship between the second decree of creation and marriage. With the proper use of the intervention of agency and our first parents transformed Olam into Eden. By the first human use of the intervention of agency, all based on their individual visions, being distinctly a man and a woman. And that transformation became complete with the wedding because now the proper use of the individual expressions of the use of the intervention of agency by both a man and a woman fulfilled the second decree of creation. And they did not compete together in each their calling, but the uniqueness of each one was fully respected and accepted by them both and by Anarchus. And our father Yatsuka defined the elements in creation, yea, even all the watchers of heaven and all their hosts and in all their families. Reference number 91. Read Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 through 20. And their names reflected the definition of the spirit that gave them life, and each name arose out of some specific aspect of the heart of their very creator, Mozart, our lamb. And he told them what they were, and in this way he set in place the right relationship they were to have with mankind, and this is called righteousness. And in this way our first father established righteousness in everything he came to. And this established the pattern that would allow every living soul in creation to have within themselves four spirits of life. And because of this, Mozart the Lamb could take the vision of Yatsukad and enter into all that was thus defined in righteousness. And Yatsukad did this very purposefully and with innocence of heart. And he was moved upon to do the acts of righteousness by his ability to feel and discern what Anarchus wanted each thing to be. And utterly each and every definition came solely because of the infinite love of Anarchus in the heart of Yatsuka. And this is not all. The Erekota she also chose to embrace fully the four spirits of life that each one of them would hold within themselves. And they eagerly opened their arms to accept the spirit and presence of both Moza and Yatsuka. And it was a coming home for the Erekota she that is cherished to this day and reviewed with the birth of every new child and every vision that finds a body to live in and the joy of it for the Erekota she to experience a response to their invitation can only be felt by those who cross over. And Yatsuka did this using the intervention of agency and he chose to love Mozart purposefully and deliberately and he used the element of righteousness, and it was the feelings of his heart and his longings to walk with the love he felt in creation. And only in Eden can such pure element be brought to bear. In the temporal world, righteousness can only be accomplished when the spirits of life are enjoined together under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And a marvelous thing is before my eyes that I have never known, and that is how deliberately all of this was entered into and accomplished. And when Yatsukat intervened, there was great movement in heaven, and all that deliberateness is that which makes the intervention of agency work, and all that deliberateness is perfect harmony with the desires of Anarchist, built the power of righteousness in such a way that redemption now utterly permeates all that exists and it has the power to join those in the temporal world to Eden and this is now the foundation of the order of Abara which refers to crossing over and crossing over indicates redemption now remember the Dakar Archi were not accepting of the presence of Moza because his love was seen by them to be accusatory for it brought to mind for them the definition Yasikad had given them and that definition required them to give of themselves and to acknowledge before their fellows what they considered a lowly position. When they compared themselves to each other, and in this way, they came to reject the spirit and presence of Moza and Yatsukat that came to them, and this corruption brought them to only have two of the four spirits of life. 
and they formed a confederacy and agreed together to make their own way and to choose their own definitions and to force the spirit of life they chose upon mankind so they could find dominance over their fellows and lead men to pursue the satisfaction of possessions and the name of their confederacy is called wickedness and the leader of their domain is named Mount Sor the Decadent by Anarchist. And the guidance tablet has written upon it instructions for men and women and how they are to proceed and approach their intervention with agency. And it shows a man bending down over opposition to touch the spirits of life and creation, to use them to bring blessings and the gift of life. And this is shown in the top half of the man's side of the tablet. And it shows righteousness flowing out over the side of the tablet to indicate the authority coming from it. And the bottom half of the tablet on the woman's side shows the woman laying claim to her beginning and purifying her charity and innocence of heart. And it shows her rich charity overflowing to cover her children and all that is good. And our lovely first mother, Haba, intervened with her agency in her way as a woman, with just as profound effect and just as deliberately. And all her soul could think of was love and friendship and companionship and deep bonding and rich charity and innocence of heart. And all she did was spontaneous and utterly selfless. And because creation was defined and knew who and what they were through Yatsikat, they could discern that part of themselves that still felt empty. And she provided answers for them when they asked, Who are our friends? Who needs our love? And how are all of us to be joined together in perfect love? And Hava intervened with her agency using the element of righteousness, which, like Yatsikat, was the feelings of her heart, buoyed up by an infusion of the desires of Anakis, and also her song and dance were elements of righteousness, and she brought salvation to dwell in creation. And she brought forgiveness, and all the Erko to she were forgiven for not knowing the answers to the questions which she answered. For she joined all the spirits of life together and instructed them in her dominion concerning all their right relationships together. And her intervention became so powerful that salvation began to permeate all that exists. And when they came together to be married, these two acts of intervention on the part of every living soul in creation among the Erekodishi were found to have a fullness of their gift of life. And that joining in marriage was the source of everlasting praise among the Erekodishi and the watchers of the presence. And it gave rise to the very first feelings of fear in the hearts of those who would become the Darkar Darchi. And for this reason, men are charged with managing the fear of things we ought to be afraid of. And they are to keep such fear in its place, viewed only in the influence of diligence and trust in the Lord through obedience. And women are charged with managing the fear of children and families against fantasies and vain imaginings. And they are to manage such fear by suppressing it and replacing it with hope in the Lord and the knowledge of the truth. And when they went before the altar, Hava was afraid because she did not know how she stood before Anakis in relation to her son and imagined she was unworthy. But she was taught the truth that Anakis would have a measure of grace for him and she felt forgiven and she rose up in the dance and the grass spoke to her of her being clean and forgiven, and the truth set her free in the very spirit of forgiveness that she had a hand in magnifying as she participated in transforming Olam into Eden. Came to her and her friends the grass, and they joined happily with her in her feeling clean once again. And it came to pass that after Melchizedek had answered questions, they all departed to their dwelling places to ponder on all these things. And I can see now that this is an in-gathering, much like they used to do at the pool of heaven. And many people are gathered together to be taught. And I see many layers for their in-gathering encampment. And our Vade is there. And she reported that Foot had passed away and that this may be her last in-gathering because soon she will remove to Lebanon to end her traveling days. And she appears to be very old. 
And now I can see the people coming together again, and Shem will be teaching, and he said, This day I will instruct you further. And he is very serious and bids them all to listen carefully. And the listeners took their places, and I can see a surprising sight, for I see that they have a tablet written by Enoch, and written upon it are the division of days. And it has been brought to him by his son Shari, and that which Enoch has brought will be a call to repentance. And Melchizedek loves them all very dearly, and he is going to speak now. And he said, We as the people of Anarchus have a rich blessing we can bestow on our Heavenly Father, and when we stand before him, our joy to have blessed him will be boundless. And the reproval you will hear this day will bring a wholeness to the community of the righteous. And I tell you now that the spirit of Vashuya is here with us because it was the longing of his heart for all righteousness with the use of element to be firmly established among his people. And the true interventions of the righteous will be a sustaining force in the earth to protect the purposes of anarchist and creation when they implement fully the division of days. And all the holy days of anarchist are accomplished through the intervention of agency, and they are all formal worships, and they are undergirded by marriage, which power arises out of the second decree of creation, and the full participation of men and women is required with deliberateness. And I will explain to you how the various ways the intervention of agency needs to be used on each holy day of the year and this has not been known before in Qatar, in the regions round about, and now we can begin to establish this righteousness among ourselves as a part of the preparations the Lord desires for the long duration of the earth in the days ahead. There is a day in the New Year worship when everyone meets together to confess their sin, and that day is the purification day of the entire New Year. And that day is to be done in the setting of families in their villages so that their expressions of confession can be free and clearly spoken by the shy and also the little children without the inhibitions of a large assembly. And the next day is the day for the women to intervene with their agency to bring the spirit of the love of Anarchist as our tender father and their elements of righteousness are the needles and clothing either new or to place patches on them. And careful preparations are to be made before this day arrives and their plans and worship well laid and they are to teach and expound with great effect and with deliberate prayers to influence the people the entire year. To feel the definition of clothing and righteousness established in Eden and in their loving wisdom, they should identify ways throughout the year that their companion women can enlarge upon their repentance in this matter. And the next day is the day for the men to intervene with the element of righteousness to magnify a close and personal daily walk with Amicus so that they can learn to emulate him in all his ways and walk in accordance to all he would say to them as a father to his child and their rich testimonies will penetrate the heart and the men of abara are to preside this day to bring the spirit of crossing over to the people and they are to diligently and deliberately prepare that which is needed to bring healing to those in distress or dismay both in their bodies and in their souls and their element is the fire and paint in their lives as a living moral sacrifice in giving without measuring the cost. And they are to pray and set in place a notion among the Erekodeshi for the use of the elements of righteousness for the coming year will be magnified and strengthened by their simple prophecies. And they are to be open to that which they hear by the Spirit in the way of any special need the people may encounter when they need to call upon the Erko Deshi for assistance. And on the day of the measure of Melu, Edra intervened with his agency, and he greatly expanded the understanding of the people about Moza the Lamb being the creator when he named the Aral Sea. Before that day, even with Sakar and Rihi,
The living water was a stream where rain and dew collected to pass by on his journey toward Elda. And they knew it ran into the sea, and the sea was seen by them to be water that had no end, but went on forever, and it was likened to the eternity of Elda. And when Edra named the Aral Sea to indicate that it described Mozart as our hero, he was declaring to them all by the intervention of his agency, and with the use of the element of righteousness sprinkled on the water, that Mozart the Lamb was indeed the creator. And the knowledge and realization that he was the creator prepared the way for Milo to make her great declarations. And the people were all born again, coming from this new understanding as to what he meant to them. And they were all baptized unto this new expanded joy unto their repentance. And the joy of the water to receive them was like the transformation from Olam into Eden. And when the men on this day are to intervene to broaden the awareness of the people throughout the coming year, that they can look to discern the spirit and presence of Mozart and all the elements that sustain their daily lives and teach the children to do this naturally by speaking of it often. And they are to see that all the people have available to them the holy knowledge of the spirits of life that give life to the Urkodeshi so that what he feels is close to them and always available. And using the element of righteousness, the women are to make declarations of the completeness of the vision of Mosa the Lamb, and they are to bless the water for the coming year that is used in their daily lives to set in place the free movement of forgiveness. And the women should go to the wells and the creeks and the rivers to bless them on that day. And the men are to intervene with their agency using the element of righteousness to bless the living water among the people. So that reproval, repentance, and forgiveness will be magnified in their daily lives and flow easily. And they are to set in place by example the love of repentance and the acceptance of reproval in rich humility. And they are to see to it that confessions and forgiveness do not go unspoken. And the day of instruction is what the ancients call Shabuah, before the days of Melchizedek. And he continued to speak, and he said, On the day of instruction, the men are to intervene with their agency, using the element of righteousness by the sound of a trump, to instruct the Erkodeshi in the needful way of the times, to limit their tolerance for evil influences on the Lord's righteous, and to bring blessings and protections according to the need and this intervention is in behalf of Mozart the Lamb. And it is in his behalf in view of his burden. And his burden is to be on their hearts. And they are to love him with compassion for a jubilee of days. And during this jubilee of days, they are each and every one to mourn with him in his times of sorrow. And they are to stand up as his protectors in the face of all that troubles him. And they are to make clear determinations to express their loving concern for him, and they are to instruct the Erkodeshi in remedies with exactitude and firm determination. And on the day of the day of instruction, the men, even all of them in their order of service, are to be deliberate with their interventions, with confidence and great power after the trump of declaration, to look out with their eyes as they behold the sunrise, with the spirit of challenge on his behalf, and instruction should flow towards the causes of his burden, as one dear friend stands for another, and they are to be fearless as his advocates, not measuring the cost to themselves. And at the sound of the trump, the Erekodeshi will thrust themselves forward on his behalf, and they will overcome all restraint that comes against them. Rejoice, O heaven, and all mountains sing of him. And after the trump of assistance on the very day of instruction, the women are to stand forth before the Lord, to intervene with their agency, to bless the families of the righteous all over the earth, that they may be brought together in safety with hope in the Lord, and faith in Anarchus their father. And the women are to intervene with their agencies with determination to support all those who are subject to the actions of the Erkodeshi. For when the Erkodeshi grieve, the righteous can suffer. And they are to request among the Erkodeshi adequate provision and needed guidance for all the parents among them. And maternal bonding will be shed abroad. 
and the spirit of womanhood and of motherhood will be enlivened and become joined with the compassion that flows from Elder coming out of the heart of Anarchist himself. And it will be seen as a source of beauty by the Urkudishi for the women to all have a common spirit and their power as women and mothers will not be stayed in blessing the families of the righteous. And during a jubilee of days, they are to think upon the plight of those who suffer, who have the father's mark, and who the Erekodeshi have laid claim to. And at this time, Melchizedek ended his teaching for the day, and all the people contemplated what they were taught with serious consideration. And it came to pass that the teaching is continuing, and this time I can see the Lord is here. And he is happy, and all these holy days are a result of his personal use of the intervention of agency. And the more deliberate the holy days are observed, the more he is able to bless his Father together with us. And in this way, mankind can actually come to the aid of Mozart in his achieving his vision. And as I viewed this scene, and I began to see Eden in my view, over the top of the people, and Shem is explaining the first Passover, which the ancients called the Day of Tranquility. And indeed, the Eden before me is tranquil. And the reality of the feelings in Eden are easy to forget because they are so foreign to our daily lives. And Melchizedek said, The holy day of the Feast of Tranquility is a constant reminder to us that the tranquility of Eden can be brought to our daily lives here in the temporal world by our trust in the Lord and by our compassion for the oppressed. And all the Erkodeshi are perfectly aware of all the intentions of Anarchist and the harmonious relationships established by Hava and Yatsukat. And what they did to transform Olam into Eden is present before their eyes. And there was no shadow of corruption in those friendships of rich bonding together. And into this marvelous scene of delight and happiness comes a wayward child of a comet. And the disruption was not just the crashing sounds and the shrieks hurling the sounds of death into Eden, but it was the introduction of fear into the tranquility of Eden. And oppression shattered the foundations of the happiness of Eden, and fear was the principal bearer of oppression. And our first parents were oppressed by fear and fled the only place they had known as home, never to return again. And the ignorance of the rebellious was manifested because it took Semihaza a little while to realize he had caused fear. And he brought fear with him because when he broke away from his mother, he did not know where he was going and he was afraid. And his rebellion was the author of fear. And when he discovered that he had control over the objects of creation with fear, he felt the acceleration of dominance and power over his fellows. And he became determined that he would continue to use fear to oppress. The two souls slept in the arms of Anakis that night, and compassion flowed out and spilled over. To cover the oppressed with loving kindness and fear evaporated away utterly, and the tranquility of Eden was restored with the arms of Anakis. And of their own accord, the Urkodashi were moved within themselves, with a new awareness brought on by this witness of fear and their souls overflowed with protective instincts and they spontaneously rose up and passed over first the sleeping figures and then the resting place of Semihaza and he was quieted by them and wanted to hide himself. And now it is forever etched in the minds of the Erekodeshi that they will pass over the oppressed to still the voice of fear and they will pass over the oppressors to bring them to an awareness of their smallness in the face of the power of the truth. And with the division of days established by Enoch, they took on the perpetual task of passing over the righteous when they are oppressed with fear. And in this way, the inhabitants of Ma'in were blessed. Now all the Erekodeshi were accustomed to passing over the inhabitants of Ma'in. And they learned something from Zedekedelebeb that they didn't know. They learned that they had to seek out the righteous among the wicked so they could pass over them to bless and comfort them when they too slept with Anarchus. And so Anarchus' pillow became their signal to bring tranquility to his people wherever they were found and in any kind of circumstance. 
And Melchizedek said, Anakis has two criteria as to who he will visit with his presence to sleep with first, those who revere his name, and that is to say, revere what his name means. And it means I am loving kindness. And second, those who abide by the sanctity of marriage, single, married, child, or widow, all who hold to the sanctity of marriage he sleeps with. And for his lovely ones who do not know of his pillow, he will bring his own. And so on the day of tranquility, the men intervene with their agency, using the element of righteousness to call upon the Arakodishi to identify their own and lay claim to them, to cover them with protection. And the women using the element of righteousness shall set in place seven protections. They will address the needs of the day for those who the Arakodishi have identified. And these interventions must be led by the spirit and must be deliberate and formulated year by year. And it will be best if they are identified by the women and prepared for during the Jubilee of days preceding the day of tranquility. And the men intervene with their agency, with the elements of righteousness, to call upon the Erekodeshi to identify their own and to lay claim to them. And every holy day sets forth the unique righteousness of it for the year. And so the Passover intervention lasts until the next Passover, and every holy day is after this manner. And it came to pass that Anakist was passing by in Abariel, who are the clouds of heaven, and he was viewing his handiwork. And it was at this time when the last vestiges of Eden were disappearing from the earth, as well as the conditions of Olam. And the earth had become fully temporal, and Anakis knew the people were living together in greater numbers, and living only by hunting and gathering their food would become more and more difficult. And he could even now hear the cries of the children for the want of food, and he knew that his children must begin to till the earth in order to continue to have plenty, and the distress of want was before the eyes of the Erekodeshi. And he knew that in order to make this change and to do this repentance, they had to grow in their knowledge and understanding of the Erekodeshi and how to use them for their provisions. Because now they had to know about the rain and what the dirt was like, that the plants needed, and they would now have to deal with the influence of birds and insects, and a new relationship with the sun must be gained, and of the seasons also, and even what they ate would change, and an understanding of how they could put by for winter must come to them, and most of all using the earth for provision meant they must form new relationships among themselves in working together in new ways and depending on one another and families and marriages must form new levels of bonding in their daily task. And fathers would be home more and not gone so long in the hunt. And the prospect of all this pleased Anakis greatly. And so on the feast of Vicar, the men are to exercise their agency to intervene with the elements of righteousness, to magnify the people's ability to join with the Erekodeshi in new and important ways and learn to understand them and to depend on them. And when this happened, there were celebrations in Elda and all the council of Elda and all the myriads of the hosts sang praises to Anakis. And they rejoiced that the earth, even the hills and streams could make this final transformation to feed the children of Anakis and to make a way for the animals to become personal friends to mankind in their daily lives. And I can see that this feast of Icar truly represents a vital step in bringing many conditions of Eden into the temporal world. Because in Eden, all the Erko Deshi took care of our first parents and fed them in abundance according to their need. And animals were their friends. And husband and wife and children had no need to depart away from one another. And the Erko Deshi prospered in their happiness and their fulfillment was before their eyes, and parts of the earth that only had been walked on now held her children in rich embrace. So on this important day, by the grace of their lovely Redeemer, and with deliberateness, the women are to bring the celebrations of Elda to the people, and they shall bear witness in their joy of the Father's love, in sharing and in song, 
An anarchist loves the singing and praises of little children, and the women are to lead the children in song before all the congregation and the assembly of the people. And a true spirit of thanksgiving will mark this day, and faith will be enlarged with a rich anticipation for the days to come. And it came to pass the next day that Melchizedek continued to teach concerning the holy days, and he said, As you all well know, the children of the land have been very unstable in their lives and dependability, and righteous parents have undergone much sorrow when their children choose to turn away from anarchist and all things good. And even wicked and ignorant parents suffered grief when their children showed no loyalty to the ways they had chosen for them and the wayward have been troubled because built into their souls was an innate sense of right and wrong. And this came because of one of the divisions accomplished by Enoch, which resulted in every person being born with a conscience to know right from wrong. And so there became a day of remembering virtue and Ebedel is the rock of witness for the day of remembrance. And the stones of the Urim are the elders of Ebedel for this day. And on this day, the men are to intervene with their agency, using the elements of righteousness to call upon Ebedel to remember the truth of the ages, things past, present, and of the future. And importantly with that, the men among the scribes are to step forward in power and sure determination to strengthen the ability and readiness of parents to teach their children all things useful and good and holy about Anarchist and the Erkodeshi together with a strong knowledge of their spiritual heritage coming down to them in their families and among their people. And Ebedel will be their resource with the stones of the Urim leading the way and the rocks of birthplaces being a sure guide for those who seek to discover their visions of created purpose and the people, each one should be encouraged to go there. And if they cannot go there, then they should select a rock that knows them personally and discuss with the Lord all his hopes in the day he created them. And Ebedel is charged with a knowledge of the truth and she will bear a strong witness at the judgment because she long remembers and can verify all that is written in the books that are opened on that day. And on this day of remembering virtue, the power of it and the reach of it is applied to all the righteous of the earth among every people and tongue. And the men are to view their intervention to apply broadly to all the families of the righteous wherever they are found. And the stones of the urn are principal in the last days. And during our tribulation times and that which is brought by them should be searched for indications of personal enlightenment. And the women are to recount to the people and to the Erekodeshi the meaning of the names of the people and of the joyous traditions that arise from the truth of their righteous forebearers. And they are to recount special personal days to one another and share in the joy of them and tell stories in their villages about births and passages of life and recount honorable achievements and successes. And I was able to feel in this moment that the account of Adah's forgiveness was repeated over and over again on this day. And on the day of new oil, it shall be witnessed that Anarchist has a desire to live with his children, and the men are to seek guidance as to how they can minister to the people so they can know him, and they are to establish by their intervention a clear pathway to Eden. And they are to establish and manage the storehouse in such a manner that happy moments with anarchists flow in the lives of the people. And this is done by their example to avoid the Dakar Daji. And the influence of the world in all their daily walk, and also by suppressing the satisfaction of possessions in the lives of the children. And they are to have watch care over their families in such a way that the mothers can perform the labors of their daily lives with a spirit of calmness and confidence. And the women are to intervene with a firm foundation in virtue, in charity, in obedience to the spirit of the Lord. And they are best to be guided in their association together by the meanings of the four directions of Anarchus and how he would reprove in his loving kindness. How does he want life to be lived? To include the sweet moments that are recorded in the book of life, what would Anarchus do? 
to bring assurance to those who need to feel forgiven? And what vision is before the Father of heaven and earth that gives him hope? And if they do all these things and live the answers to those questions, those in their midst who have fallen prey to violence and acts of evil, who have repented before the Lord can find peace in Ma'in and will be comforted and transformed and be whole with his marvelous forgiveness. And on the day of forgiveness, the men are to establish or reaffirm with a firm intent the love of repentance and to encounter reproval with humility and a wise comportment. And they are to teach throughout the year repentance that arises out of love for the Lord that is joined to forgiveness. And on this day, the Ur Kodeshi will be waiting for their instruction in how to cover the people with his mantle of forgiveness. And they are to pray specific prayers for their loved ones in the Lord. And the women are to set in place during the preceding Jubilee of days with deliberateness and intelligence and with gentleness, the surety of a tried wall against pride. And the Ur Kodeshi have longed for the day for that wall to be built among the righteous. And they wait with anticipation for the women of Mai to accomplish this task for Anarchus. And righteous women in community have been prepared by the Lord, and they are skilled to accomplish it. And Anarchus will endow them with power as they enter in to keep those protections in place among the people. And it will grow in time to be a bulwark that is impenetrable by the tempter. And it will come here a little and there a little year by year as they show sin and error to not be a crisis but only normal with a strong showing of love in spite of sin and the people will learn to feel the feelings that uphold forgiveness and any accuser will be shut out and the final blow to evil in the days of your year will be crowned with the rich mantle of forgiveness and thus the last holy day of the year leads you to arrive back to reclaim your beginning on the day you give your life to the Lord with the measure of Milu. And it came to pass that with these teachings, the end gathering of the people for the year was accomplished. And as they departed to their many dwellings, I lingered behind being much in thought and the Lord lingered there also. And he seems to be in deep contemplation. So I began to withdraw myself from the vision before my eyes. But as I glanced over toward him, he is looking at me with seriousness, telling me with his eyes that he is sorry if I will grieve over that which he has lingered to tell me. And I noticed that Melchizedek was there to listen also. And the Lord is starting to speak to me. And many times I have listened as the Lord spoke to Melchizedek. But now the Lord is speaking to me with him listening. And in my heart, I wondered what it could mean. And the Lord discerned my thoughts and he said, What I have to tell you, little son, will well up in the end of days to be of immense importance for the Ur Kodeshi. They have suffered during the days of Noah, but their trials were in the midst of a very righteous people who were always in tune with their feelings. And they loved the Ur Kodeshi deeply. But in the end of days, mankind will be completely alien to the plight of the Ur Kodeshi and the feelings of their hearts. And it must needs be that I reach you now, so that the righteous during the tribulations and during the great gathering that will follow may be joined in their hearts and souls with the Ur Kodeshi to enable them to endure their sufferings so that they may have the strength to act to support the desires of my father, Anarchus, in bringing his world to a successful conclusion. And the Lord said, I have longed for this day and I have dreaded it because it is both sweet and bitter, bitter because of the severity of the tribulations and sweet because at long last light will triumph over darkness. So now I must bring my people to a true companionship with the Erko Dishi and join their souls together. Now understand that the Erko Dishi are the mothers and fathers of some of the Darkar Darchi and they are kindred to them, and they are their associates in creation, and they are a family together before the Great Holy One, and they are the community of creation, and their experience as parents in all these ways is just like your own in your righteous desires. 
and my eyes were taken to see a marvelous sight, and one I should have known before this, and perhaps I have known, but now the reality of it rested heavily upon me. And I see Eden after our first parents were married, but before there came the tempter into Eden, and the sight of it was amazing before my eyes. How can any man see such wondrous things? And as I looked, the Lord said, And all that is before your eyes, the watchers of heaven are a family. And their love and bonding together came to be directly by the influence of Elda. And the personal presence of my father there, an anarchist, is love and only love. Even the infinite spirit of love that permeates all that exists. And all the spirits of life and creation are his children in deep affection. Notwithstanding, man is in his image. And all that have the spirit of life should give life in Eden, even all the watchers of heaven, and they can be named one by one. And they all should have given life and loved with unbounded love, even those of their own in their responsibility together. And in Eden, after they all were defined to know who they were and what they were, by myself and Yatsikad, and they have established among themselves with regard to who they love and who needs their love, by myself and Hava, their love together in their families and among their companions cannot be measured by temporal man. And the joys in creation was a rich measure indeed for my father Anakist and myself. But we knew that with the gift of agency, all that would change. And the Erekodeshi had no such foresight, and neither did our first parents, nor the Dakardachi themselves. And Anakis saw that all the spirits of life that he had created were good, and I saw that all the forms I had fashioned for the natural world for those spirits to live in were good. And all the spirits of life and creation were called the Ear. Reference number 92. Strong's number 5894 which means watchers, and they came to be called angels, and they were called this by the ancients, because they knew that every spirit of life and creation was alive and could see and act upon that which they beheld. And in this vision of loveliness in Eden, that is before your eyes, agency had its effect, and with the watchers, it ran its course during the first seven generations of mankind in the temporal world. And during that time, one third of the watchers of heaven chose to leave their stations of love, which they had been given, only to fall away from the purposes of Anarchus for them. And because of their behavior after their fall, they became known as the Dakar Darchi. Reference number 93. For the Dakar Darchi, see Strong's number 1762, the key to fall from number 1760. Daka, to chase or drive away, outcast. And the ancients thought of them as male because in the ancient tongue, the word Dekar, number 1798, means male. And the rest of the word refers to them being a society that dwells together, number 1753. And they are known as the sons of God in the ancient record. And heretofore, little son, you have not understood how to think of them, so I will help you. And this is what the Lord said to me. And the watchers of holiness watch you, and they feel things about what they see. And they do not look with eyes of judgment, but they only look with eyes of love. And they rejoice and speak among themselves when they see virtue and kindness. But the central condition that moves them is the sanctity of marriage, and by this measure, they can easily discern someone who walks with anarchists and those who do not. And much wisdom and understanding must be brought to bear by the righteous when considering just what the Erko de she see and how to grasp their view of people and what they see is the task at hand in learning. This is because your view of people as to what it means to walk with anarchists can be tainted with traditions and opinions that they do not share with us. For they view Anarchist as the one who is loving kindness, and no matter what people call him or what name they know him by, the Erko does she only have eyes and hearts to know him 
as the one who is loving kindness. And the Urkodeshi have their own name for him, and it is Anakis. And they have their own name for each and every human soul. And all people have been created with three names. There is their Anakis name, which is the name Mosa used to persuade him to create you. And there is your family name that your family chose to call you at your birth. And there is your Erkodeshi name that they have selected as a way of defining your lifelong relationship with them in the midst of creation. And they also look upon you with eyes of love, calling you and thinking of you by what is for them your second sacred name. Your first name is your Anakis name. Your second name is the name you were given by the Erkodeshi on the fifth day after your birth. And your third name comes from your family. The first two names are always sacred, and the third one can be, especially for those whose people are led by the Holy Spirit. And unlike Anarchists, the Erkodeshi can seem to have anger in the expressions of their grief. And often during the course of the earth, holy people attribute that grief that seems like anger to Anarchists, who in fact cannot be angry. And this is because while the Erkodeshi look with eyes of love, they can easily discern spiritual things, and they, being watchers of the presence, desire only for Anakis to be happy and fulfilled as our father. And their grief is shown forth when they know of his disappointments and despair. So their grief is shown forth by the devouring fires and the tempest winds and the shaking of the earth. And when the waves of the sea cast themselves upon the land and when the rivers bring floods, and when the rain and clouds withhold themselves, and with plagues of insects and disease, and all these are not acts of Anakis, but they are indeed signs of the grief of the Erkodeshi and something they are doing in their grief and despair. And for this reason, the righteous everywhere upon the earth must needs walk a close walk with the Erkodeshi, which is the very definition of righteousness. And it is becoming for the righteous to grieve with them together to comfort them. And remember all that emotion and creation arises out of love for Anarchus. And the Erkodeshi can and do grieve for the burden of Mozart the Lamb. And his burden is not the easiest for the righteous to discern, it being so often focused on very present trials and concerns over our daily sins and distresses. And the Dakardachi look out with eyes that only look narrowly upon mankind and their habit is severe judgment with accusations and ridicule. And they have chosen very purposefully to hate you rather than love you. And they strongly resent any relationship you have with the man Mozart. And they hate your first two names and mock Anarchist in his designs of your soul. And they are always angry and unpleasant. Beware that they will betray you to your enemies and be also aware that your trials in your daily walk are made stronger when you have friendly relationships with the Dakar Darchi. And when you have continuous friendly contact with them, it is almost impossible to achieve holiness of heart and to avoid contention and strife in your families and in your communities. Do not be fooled for they are well practiced and very skilled at asserting their influence into your life with lies and deceits and their evil is well sufficient for the days ahead. So cling to the Erko Deshi and your wonderful Savior and walk in loving kindness with your father, Anarchus. And know this, the ones who have fallen among the spirits of life and creation are not evil in their design, or that is to say, in their creation. And they are not evil because mankind uses them for evil. They fell because they found delight in being evil and in being used for evil. And in the end of days, Anarchus will be forced to use these wayward watchers to minister to his righteous people. And it seems to me to be such a mockery of his being. And the Lord continued to explain and he said, so for example, Ramtel the coal, which is the burning stones of God, reference number 94. See the books of Enoch, Aramaic Fragments of Qumran, K4, by J.T. Millick, Oxford, 1976, page 155. Is not fallen because it is used for evil, 
but it is fallen because it delights to be used to further the influence of sin, violence, and corruption. And when the earth is made new at the end of days, coal will remain in the earth and upon it, but it will not be used for evil. And most importantly, no spirit of life in it will find delight in waywardness. And all the spirits of life that fail will find no place for those feelings to dwell. And the spirits of the dark heart archi will be utterly cast off, and they cannot repent, for that opportunity ended in the first seven generations. And the word dark heart archi is not a name of substance, but a name of rebelliousness on a vast and penetrating scale that finds its home in element of wickedness, for they care only for themselves to obtain power over mankind and over one another to bring death, and their desire is toward evil in one movement, toward the oppression and destruction of man, and they want to decide who is born, how they live, and when they die, and how mankind lives their gift of life is viewed by them to be their central task. And for this reason, it can be known that they desire to be like the Most High, to control all of creation with their evil. And hills are the mothers of coal, and water is their father. And some group of hills are the mothers to the coal within them. So different coal fields have different mothers. And some coal does not know if it wants to be used for evil. And it is afraid when it is dug out, and once out of the ground, it takes up the evil of its companions. And all the dark heart archi are like that. And each source of the dark heart archi have different parents. And in the same way as man and all of the Arakoti sheep, parents mourn greatly. And the mountains have given birth to many of the dark heart archi, and they hold them within themselves. And the sun and many of the Arakoti sheep are parents. And they try to teach their children. And righteous mankind try to teach them during the first seven generations. And Mozart tried to teach them, but they would not be taught except by bad. And the wind is the father to Zekel, and the lightning of the earth is their mother. And the thunder is the voice of parents, proclaiming the desires of Anarchists to them as they are taught. And all the generated electricity is like a child that has been stolen away from them to be used to overcome the world with evil, and their grieving is heavy upon them. And fire is the father of phosphorus and sulfur, and volcanoes are their mothers, and their children ran away and joined themselves to those who work evil in darkness to commit the unpardonable sin, and their parents cry and tremble, belching forth their grief. And the wind is the father of thunder, and the clouds are its mother, and wind is abased and dishonored by Zekel. Reference number 95 generated electricity and it howls and surges over the sea only to crash into the land in its despair and lightning burns the domain of the wicked and all such things are the grief of parents and in all these things the Erkodeshi are just like you and you are called upon to have compassion upon the wind in the face of their dishonor and the wind and the hills are blessed by the compassion of the righteous and when the wicked alter the plants of the field to make them like the Nephilim, they feel forced to bear them, and they want to die just like Adah. And know that such fornication is a sign to mankind that the Erkodeshi are near the end of their tolerance. And I can recall the time when I thought upon those in Helia, and I saw them using their orb sticks to generate little lightning flashes. And Zekiel taught the signs of lightning strikes. Reference number 96. See Books of Enoch, Cave 4, Malik, page 158. And the righteous in the end of days will be forced to use a kill in all their daily walk. And this great calamity will come upon the children of men in the end of days. And the grace of the Lord will cover for them if they resist the Darkar Darchi. Now remember... The Erekodeshi love anarchist with unabounding love, and to have to witness and experience their companions and kindred in creation, hating anarchist and the man that he became and blaspheming his holy name is very grievous indeed, and the righteous can do nothing about that. 
But there is another portion of the burden of the Erechot is she that the righteous in the last days must address for the sake of my father. Now try to understand their plight. For the Erechot is she know that their purpose is to be the home of mankind and the place for Anakis to give the gift of life to all the souls of mankind. And they are wholly dedicated to this end. And their greatest longing is to fulfill the desires of Anakis for his children, and they are earnestly devoted to that end with every fiber of their existence and central to how Anakis has intended for them to fulfill their purpose is to be the companions of mankind. And since the very substance of their being is the love of Anakis, their purpose is to bring the spirit of Anakis and his presence to be experienced by mankind in rich companionship and their grief is magnified by alienation. But the multitudes of the wicked are alienated to all the spirits of life in the Erechodeshi, and they look upon them with dead eyes to see the living souls there, and their ears cannot accept even one word from them in all their heavenly utterances. And my father needs the righteous in the end of days to be their companions in deep and profound ways. For in that day, the Erechodeshi will languish in the agony of their loneliness, and they will find it very hard to accomplish all my father needs them to do for him. And the personal companionship with them of the righteous will support them and sustain them and empower them to forge ahead in their heavy labors. And this is the awareness that the righteous must come to in their repentance in the times of tribulation. And I will rehearse this reproval for them very carefully. And I know the righteous in that day will take delight to perform their repentance because they honor the Most High and they revere His name. The Erechodeshi are alive and they are living souls. They see and feel. They know in their knowing heavenly things. They are all well acquainted with that which Anakis has made them to do with their lives. They are very skilled in each of their tasks, and they all have profound truths to bring into the hearts and minds of the righteous in their times of need, and they often see the face of God, and they are filled with innocence and charity before mankind. But alas, the greatest and most needed intimate friends of mankind are lonely and they are staggering under their burden alone. And all the righteous must join their hearts and lives with them in all their daily walk together in order for them to succeed in all their assigned tasks. And so this is the knowledge that is needed for the righteous to accomplish their repentance. And by my Holy Spirit, I will add to these things for all those who seek me concerning these matters. And it came to pass that I began to see many of the Erechodeshi, and I looked into their hearts. So now, dear brothers and sisters, consider these things. The trees are listeners, and they hear every sound and word of man, and they spread the news across the earth, and they are dependable to do it. Have any of the righteous given them a message to send that will bless the great and holy one? or sent them on a mission to inform creation and the righteous to prepare every needful thing for the days ahead? Have you asked them to tell you the news regarding the hard burden of Moza as he feels every feeling of despair of the oppressed and destitute among men? Have you walked among them to thank them for all they do for you, even to provide you with breath to breathe? Do you comfort them as they grieve over all they hear? As the listeners for Anarchist, do you consciously use them according to the spirit of life they have been given and reassure them that for you they are fulfilled in the purpose Anarchist has for them? Do you attempt to fill their longings for companionship with you? The trees have a central task in looking after the welfare of the righteous during the tribulation times at the end of days, and they languish without your companionship and you may languish without them. And the hills must suffer the footsteps of armies and feet running in fear or the treading of the lost and hungry and countless multitudes of those who go about their ways of ignorant corruption. And they are aware of the spiritual condition of the person who walks upon them. Do you ask them how your standing is before Anarchist? And will you listen to their answer? When you do, 
you will be startled and amazed at the message of love and forgiveness they have for you. And a true sense of your standing with Anakis will enter into your soul, both for your joy and for your serious consideration. And the hills are a major source for the righteous to be able to measure their place in the pathway of their gift of life. They know the changes and the dangers, as well as the joys and successes that will shortly appear just over the horizons, so you need to listen. And their knowledge will aid you in your parenting and in your effectiveness and your sanctity of marriage. And they cannot be kept unaware of fornications and deceits. And for this reason, hills are a vital source for you to protect yourself from those things as you walk in your unique vision of created purpose so you can know the truth about yourself and your loved ones in their pathway of life. And without their counsel, there await surprises for you at the day of judgment. The hills are truth talkers and they are your dearest friends and ever look forward to your friendship. And it will be a great benefit for the righteous to know the repentance to approach the individual heels and also to remember the languages they speak. And the wind roars about looking for companionship and it carries the breath of Anarchist in its soul like a vendor looking for one who needs her wares. And the wind listens to the trees to hear the news so she may know when someone needs her gifts and she is guided by the hills in determining who will listen and she is the highest inscribed in the west and a member of the council of elda and the voice of anarchist within her is that of a tender father with a gentle guidance for a troubled child and she is the mother of the thunder and when those in need ignore anarchist the wind will grieve in abundance and blow hard but when she succeeds with her message she will blow through the trees with the excitement of her joy and their rustling is one of the sounds of life. How many of the righteous know what it feels like for them to have the wind in their face blowing their tears away and bringing comforting answers in the midst of life's trials? How many hear the voice of the wind and go to ask her what message is being brought today? How often the wind grieves alone or rejoices in celebration alone? And the wind is a comforter with few willing to be comforted by her. Now look and behold how great Anarchist is, for he is a master cloud maker. And since the very first man, the righteous have known that it is Anarchist who rides them as he passes by. And in ancient times, when something seemed to be afoot, they would say, what is Anarchist doing as he is passing by? And it is a fitting place for him to be in the gentle mist of a cloud. An elder is filled with mists of living water. And the clouds are faithful to tell of all he feels or sees as he passes by. And the righteous will be blessed greatly by knowing the answer to that question. And this is because Anarchist is our father. And fathers know that which is to come. And they know to help children to be wise and prudent to abide the day. And those who do not seek out his voice in the wind are often caught unaware and do not know how to act responsibly in the care of their loved ones. And because clouds are bearing the presence of the Most High, their eyes can see afar off, far beyond the view of the wise and learned. Do the righteous seek to know how they can be companions to the clouds? Who but the righteous can spread the news to their fellows of what Anarchist is doing as he passes by? And very often he is doing something that he needs help with. And he is very wise, and the clouds respect his wisdom. And they purposefully pass over those who can come to his aid, so they can spread the view of the elder of all seers, even Anarchist himself. And in the open fields in the midst of trees, grass can be found to be dancing in the wind, and grass does not see afar off, but looks tenderly upon those who she is holding in her rich embrace. And she has a great inner sense to discover loneliness and estrangement. And her task before the Most High Anarchist is to bring together the needs for companionship and join them to the lonely and to embrace them tenderly. And the grasses of the fields hold authority 
to assess if the righteous stand clean before Anarchus and creation, and for the righteous grass is a true companion that can be depended upon to reprove you about unrighteousness. And she will scold her loved ones when she sees and hears sounds of death being displayed by those who pursue the satisfaction of possessions when they are numbered among the righteous. And she is the messenger of what it means to be clean and joined to creation with all the right relationships in Moza. And all down through the ages, the righteous have slept on her and they have brushed their hair with her and swept their dwellings clean with her. And those who love first and assume the best beforehand are seen by her to be the nursing mothers and gentle fathers of the children of the righteous. And the righteous can speak to the grass and it will listen. And grass will provide the bread of life for you, both temporarily and spiritually, with her holy definition. Anarchist in his vast wisdom has given us rivers. And the spirit of a river can bring quiet to your soul and rich happiness. And to know them is like watching a worker going about their task of love with diligence, who will not be disturbed or held back. And they are ever giving and utterly selfless, endlessly flowing, and they greet you on their way by. And the banks of the river are her companions day and night, and they hold the voice of the river. And they love the river that is in their embrace with tender love and deep affection. And the river banks are familiar with the pathway of the life of the righteous. And they know the right questions to ask, for sometimes we need answers, and we don't even know the questions. And the river bank will tell you the right question so you can know where to look for the answer. Rivers present a constant call to cross over, and crossing over has many faces, for we cross over from childhood to youth, and from singleness to being married, and from being a man or a woman to being a parent, we are all called by her to cross over from alienation, from creation to righteousness with creation. Do you ever thank a river all she does? In ancient times to the present, holy people will not cross a river without a prayer. And thus rivers are an important elder to men after the order of Avara. Mosa himself crossed over into his earthly ministry with the permission of the river Jordan and rivers love to bear the message to cross over from sin to forgiveness. And Anarchus filled the earth with rocks and you will find that just as rivers know the right question, rocks always know the right answers. And that is because rocks know and remember and they always remember Olam and the conditions there before Mozart took your spirit of life and went into all the forms element took in creation to dwell with you there. And rocks not only know, but they understand, and they are there for you when you need to be understood. And they love the man that Anarchus became. And in the last days, they will be heard all over the earth, calling out for a redeemer, even your redeemer, and your friend, and your savior, and your guide. Of all the Erkodeshi, they are the most aware of what he means to mankind in creation. Moza was born in a rock, and he was resurrected out of a rock. Rocks love repentance, and they will bring you reproval that will go far beyond the present, because they ever see both the beginning and the end, even from Olam through the times of the temporal earth to when we return to Eden. Questions and answers come together when rivers flow over rocks like the loving kindness of Anarchus flowing out of Elda over the edge of eternity. Will you be a friend to them in their loneliness? And Anarchus caused the living waters in the earth to move irresistibly from darkness into the light, and fountains were born, and the water from them is sweet and pure and innocent, having flowed out from the very heart of Anarchus and out of the bowels of the earth for you and for him. And out of all the grieving Erekotashi, fountains are in the most distress and are perishing in their agony of despair. For it was fountains that fed the Aral Sea, and the word Aral means our hero. Reference number 97, Strong's number 691. He is our valiant one, and the sea was named after our dear Savior. 
because he is indeed our hero, but only the hero to the righteous. And fountains burst out of the earth as living water, directly out of the anticipation of Anarchus, as he expected to find pure and undefiled, wonderful, romantic, married love. And just like fountains flowed out for him, the sanctity of marriage in the lives of his children flows out to give him fulfillment and in his great desires to have children and to happily live with them and to raise them up to be pure and holy. The fornication has now been spread far abroad and it covers the earth and the Aral Sea is dried up as an undeniable witness that our hero languishes under his burden and like all those barren of holy marriage the Aral Sea has become a salt desert. Therefore it behooves the righteous to visit and use fountains often in their cleansing and worship and to broadcast the fruits of their repentance by how they live their lives. Nothing attacks our heroes so much as fornication and lust. Reference number 98. See section on sanctity of marriage in the handbook of established righteousness. And the Aral Sea will not come back until there is a new heaven and a new earth and fire has been a daily companion to families since the beginning, and they have witnessed with delight every passage of life in mankind from birth, all along the pathway of our lives from Olam to this day. And of all the Erekodeshi, fire knows the most profoundly and understands human behavior the best, and fire in its living soul has been present to take part of every human emotion from the public to the private. And fire has accompanied the small and the great in all their doings, from marching armies to families in their quiet contemplation. And now the Darkard Archie have been very intent to replace fire in the lives of mankind. And fire has been mocked and made fun of with ridicule for those who smell like fire. And it has been used to speak great and hard words against anarchists by those who work with the elements of wickedness and it has been made the captive of armies so it could serve them in their many atrocities to burn and destroy. And fire longs for the intimate companionship that it has always known with the families of the righteous. Therefore, it is important for the righteous to so conduct their lives so they can bring into their daily walk the vision and personal presence of fire. And more than this, fire is going to rebel in the last days, and she will be stalwart to defend Anakis and his desires for his children. And the Darkhard Archi are unnoticed that fire is at the ready, waiting for his guidance to move against the wicked once and for all, so that those who choose darkness rather than the light will be left with no remnant, and the earth will be made new, and by the work of fire, all the Erekodeshi will find their rightful place in the lives of the families of the righteous. And the earth was baptized with water during the flood, and now it will be baptized with fire and the Holy Ghost. So it behooves the righteous to be on good terms with fire and gaze into her light with real introspection, to seek out a knowledge of their sins so they can repent and thus be true companions to fire when her task is shown before their faces. And the rain was created to be our special guide back to Eden, and it languishes in need of directions to find its way to lay claim to its beginnings. And to the rain, Eden represents our supreme beginning. And we all started our entering into life emerging out of water in the perfect and pure state as a little infant child. And rain knows that unless we become like a little child once more, we cannot enter to return to Eden or into the purity of our vision of created purpose. And rain is heralding instructions for us to stay on the pathway back to Eden and a round drop of rain falls on a leaf and it rolls off to join with its fellows to flow in a rivulet in deep and profound dedication to its family. And the rivulet combines with other rivulets to come together in its extended family to become a trickling water course and the trickling water course enters a creek and joins with all the others there in a joyous community, all with a common path together. And the creeks all love one another from their unique assigned places with the expectation that they are all of equal value 
in their uniqueness before Anarchus, only to give voice to the body of the man that Anarchus became, and they flow to become rivers, like peoples of various languages and cultures of the human family, and all the rivers of the earth flow from time into the eternity of the sea, to blend happily together in Eden of the eternal waters. And they follow the example of the order of Abara, who can cross over into Eden and back again with their spirits. Because over the sea, a cloud arises, and wind carries it over the land, and a drop of water falls from the cloud upon a leaf. And thus rain speaks the words of Anarchus, whose love is one eternal round. Now any who would be friends of the rain must live and be able to give voice to the cycles of life. And they must be able to speak in circles to the water, so the water can hear them in its own language, because water always desires to lay claim to its beginnings. An anarchist is very gentle always and ever, with no shadow of tumultuousness or strong assertions. The dew in the hills and grass welcome him with open arms to walk upon them in a way that only who's who love fathers can understand. And dew is the first water among the waters of creation, and they are the elder example of the living water, presenting itself ever and always to man with the passing of the days. And like anarchist, it approaches so gently that few even know when it comes, and it flows readily to all the places first that are the most willing to receive it. And it can be seen hanging on to the tiny tips of the grass, displayed in rich beauty in the light of the morning sun. And every day the dew greets the feet of mankind with the profound invitation to walk with Anarchus in the gentleness of his ways in their pathway of their new day. My how dew grieves to wet the shoes of those on their way to inflict harm or to carry out the designs of their lives with cunning deceits. Such look upon their wet feet with disgust. And after the sweet message of the dew has been so richly spoken, the dew departs as gently as it came, only to patiently await another day to seek out to find any who will be her friend and accept gladly the gentle voice of Anarchus to them and the righteous should arise and wash their hands and faces in the dew and look solemnly toward the day that the dew becomes the frost calling for endurance. And Anarchist arose to show compassion for his son, and responding to a father's love for a son, the mountains of the earth rose up in their majesty and firm resolve to assist him. And the mountains are made of the spirit of a willingness to carry his burden with him. And they have eyes to see that Anarchist is holy because everything he does is ever and only done out of love and never out of anger or vengeance. And in their grief, mountains will invite the fire within themselves to rise up and flow over in their dismay in the face of the violence of mankind and the evil of those who walk in darkness and who utter dark sentences to force their way upon the innocent and to find dominance over the loved ones of Anarchus. And they will erupt and flow out and spill over with the smoke of their despair and suffering. And in those times, they need friends from among the righteous to cry out for all the Erkodeshi to come to the aid of Mozart the Lamb to help him bear up under his burden and to show forth to him their willingness to help him by making all they do to be holy and done in loving kindness as they have known in the example of Anarchus and that they are willing to repent from all unholy acts or plans arising out of selfishness and uncleanness and the fires of volcanoes are sacred fires, and their clouds of ash spread themselves out in an attempt to hide the corruptions that have caused the Lord's burden. And the earth and her determination to see that all things work together for the good of the righteous will see to it that the covering will nourish the plants of their gardens. Do not allow your mountains to be overcome with grief, but be their helpers in their task of carrying the Lord's burden by faithfully doing your daily repentance and by loving the unloved and healing the sick whose illness was thrust upon them by the demands of an evil people. And so the Lord continued his guidance to me, showing forth the wonders to be found in our friendships with the Erico de Shee.
This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, the Covenant Tablet of Shabuah, Chapter 10. Shalom.